You passed your luck check. It's the No Class Podcast. With your hosts, Eddie. And Matt. So, Matt, how's it going? Fantastic. I'm living on top of the world. Better roses. All right. Well, we are recording this one a little bit early. Yep. So we may have less pop culture stuff to talk about, but that's the best way for you to get this because Matt will be busy on Thursday, our normal recording time. Saving lives and whatnot and, you know, heroics. But also as a little special something, I'm just getting back from ReaperCon and you're going to, whether you like it or not, you're getting the ReaperCon report. Yep. We figured we could cheap out real easy, not have to worry about a topic. Just do that. So love it. That's how much effort we go into the extra mile just for you, just, dear listener. Just for you. But first, you have to make up something to say about the long con. No, I don't have to make anything up. In TikTok, if you know you're coming, get your ticket. Time is running out. I think we're really right at close to our first 100. And as you know by now, the first 100 are going to get the cool exclusive bottle opener keychain that's really swanky. When I hold it, one of my pinkies just invariably just flies out. It's just so fancy. Um, but it's a cure for ED. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, that's how swanky and sexy it is. Exactly. It's like, why am I getting a stiffy? Well, you've got the awesome. And it even works for girls. But anyway. Um, we apologize for that. Yeah. Sorry. That might be, uh, you know, uncomfortable in certain settings. There are some swelling. Exactly. But it's not painful swelling. But long con, yes, I am so excited and I've talked to the people and they're like, it's palpable. You know, you, it's, it's, it's like a buzzing in the air. How exciting it's getting so close to go time here in what in less than a month, you'll be signing up. You'll be choosing your games. So you're going to want to have your ticket. So you get to hand pick cherry pick, if you will, mm -hmm. the most choicest games that you can only do if you have your ticket already when it's go time. When it's go time. And what is that date, Eddie? When it's over. 1 October. That's right. Someone asked the other day, and I, luckily I remembered correctly, 1 October, that's it. That's when there will be a mad dash for those choice, choice games. It's a, like a land rush. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, um, we've got uh, Brendan's games are on the schedule now, I believe. Nope. Nope, but they will be at some point. Eventually, Eventually, once I get off my lazy, lazy ass and do it. Ah. But Brendan has provided his schedule. Hey, Brendan's provided, and it's really exciting. I've had a sneak peek at what he's submitting, and he is going to be playtesting a brand new adventure that will eventually be a probably fully you know, published, ratified uh, adventure for Goodman Games, a.k.a. DCC or MCC, and you could have playtesting credits. Yeah, and with a title suggested by yours truly. Exactly, exactly. And so it's really exciting. And the other games are going to be awesome as well. But that one, it's like, it's kind of fun. We went off to play a game with Jim Ward. We were just honored to be in Lake Geneva at the local game shop playing a game with the famous Jim Ward. And I didn't even realize later on I bought that actual module that it turned out. I didn't realize this was the one we had helped. Mm -hmm. play test and I'm flipping through it and I see my name in the front and I went oh wow I didn't even know I got play test credit and I so it was really kind of neat to have your name there in the uh, module that Jim Ward wrote so that's kind of cool so yeah and then um someone else what is it uh David Beatty submitted some games I believe and no oh okay so Wait. we still got to get on David Beatty and we got to get Bill Warsh yeah which, so he's going to be running the dash for cash though and that's going to be really exciting because you know you're going to earn it with Bill <laughs> yeah. If you played it with us last year, yeah. this year, shit's going to get real. Yeah. But it's going to be awesome. I mean, that a big boardroom sized table completely covered in beautifully painted Dwarven Forge terrain with all the little flickering lights and all that. And you and, you know, five of your best friends or soon to be ex friends are going to be, you know, tooth and nail making that dash to kill beasties, take their loot. And, you know, it's it's a really neat concept, a lot of fun. Eddie did a great job tweaking what we had you know, stolen stolen with both, both hands, hands from there our good go. buddy Bill. So here's the mastermind we got the idea from. So, I mean, you know. Now the emotional scarring can be yours. Exactly. You know, you too can be barshed. 
We left that part out when we ran it, but uh -huh. nope. You're getting the full throttle experience. That's right. You're going to earn this. But, you know, last year we gave away uh, ribbons for first, second, third place in that and cash prizes. hundred bucks. Prizes. Oh, yeah. Some of these people literally made more money than they spent coming to our con. They actually made money coming to our con instead of like, oh, I'm out. The small, meager amount that we charge for a weekend A pass. pittance. Yeah. I mean, you know. But, yeah. So, get your ticket. Get on that hype train. Get juiced. Get amped freak out, you know, rip your clothes off and scream running down the street and let everyone know, like and share, Long Con's coming, Long Con is coming. Oh dear God, Long Con is coming. <laughs> Hide the booze and, you know. Lock up your daughters. That's right. Bring your grandmas. Exactly. And some Geritol. All right. But... Did you want to announce a couple of additional special guests? Oh, of course. Royalty, if you Royalty, will. Royalty, if you will. I mean, right now, both my pinkies are out. It's been confirmed that the most special of special guests, Zach Glazier and Bad Mike Battleadio, will be in attendance, and you'll be able to kiss the ring and, you know, genuflect, etc., as they walk around the con, bestowing the blessings of their presence upon all of us. And we're excited, you know. Um, Zach's great, and eh, no, anyway, we love Mike too. Um, I'm just fixing to get a tattoo. I heart bad Mike. Where you'll have to guess. No, you'll just have to wait until the con, and then you'll see. Yeah, yeah. It'll be on full display for everyone. That's right. That's right. But no, we love those guys, and they've always been really good. Like Zach came to Red River back in the day, and he was just very generous, and has given us some, you know, good advice and tips, and it's just a good. A wonderful person and his dear wife is always liking posts and stuff and she's just she did us a, a solid this weekend at ReaperCon and uh and and you know mike's always been him and doug through the years we stole ideas from them and they give us a lot of encouragement and, and literally physical. discouragement they said don't don't do this <laughs> yeah, don't and do we this. did it anyway yeah but no we you know we we think a whole lot a lot of respect etc so we're really honored to have them all joking aside we're really honored to have them and, and we're really excited that they've confirmed they were we would have been you know announcing them before now but you know they're so busy with frog gods and their own products and different projects and things in north texas so but they've confirmed I, you know i think Everyone reach out to Mike and put your thumb on him. Say, I'm going to be looking for you at Long Con, bruh. And, of course, we have Gary Oliver coming, too. Absolutely. I'm excited. And I, tell him, I felt bad that um, I think well, I'm, I think I mentioned Gary when I was on Road on Bones the other day. But, you know, Gary, he's such a good friend to us, and he's been super helpful. And we just adore Gary. But he knows that. Gary's good people. He gives the best kisses. He does. The absolute. And, he, you know, I, I was like, someone grabbed my butt at uh, North Texas. And I was like, oh, my. And it was Gary. And I was like, thanks, pal. You know, that, that really means a lot, you know. Video podcast. No uncomfortable pauses. Okay, speaking of Rolling Bones. Oh, yeah. You were just on that show, was it a week ago? I think, yeah, right out of week. Actually. And I'm glad to see they released you from the dungeon cell that you were in on that show. <laughs> yeah, you had a very interesting yeah, setup. Yeah, I'll say a lot of people were like, your, your microphone and how it came through. But normally when we've done our Twitch, I've used my laptop. But I said, I'm going to try to use my computer. And apparently my, the computer and the speaker, it, mm -hmm. it, I had to move like the microphone away or else I was getting weird feedback or something. Yeah, apparently it's back to the laptop. For well, it was completely or, dark with that one lit square or two of light so it looked oh, yeah. like you were in a prison cell and oh. i got a giggle out of that well that was actually purposeful i turned off all the lights but i moved a lamp in front of me so at least before i was backlit and then y'all go what's up with your hair and it's like it's because the way i'm backlit it's so not. so i made i was front lit this time which i thought would really bring out all the you know aged details of my face horribly you know just really stand out but anyway no um so I, I'm, I'm experimenting new things you know Oh my! Exactly, but no, I had a lot of fun with that, and uh, Ryan was really great, and uh, he seemed sincere when he said, "Hey, we should do this again sometime." So, awesome, awesome, and I, yeah, um, a lot of good people on there lately. Our buddy Lou, our buddy Levi, Bad Mike again, you know, our our bud there. So, it's so hard to find Lou on any other shows, though. <laughs> It's like he has no internet presence. He, he's, he's bashful. Like, he, he's, he's so shy. He's kind of like Prince. You know, he's like, he, he, he didn't give interviews. He's like very quiet, private person, you know. Lou Al Lou, for those of you exactly. not in the know. Which, if you don't know, when I'm saying Lou, 
my good friend, Lou, I'm talking about Lou Alou. Tisk tisk. Yeah, we we love Lou. He's good, good people. He is salt of the earth. So, anything else exciting to say about that interview? I thought it went very well. Yeah, me too. I, I, I honestly had a lot of fun. Ryan is a great uh, interviewer and host. It was very gracious, and and like I said, you know, afterwards I figured. He was going to like cut. And he's going to like get out of here. But no, I mean, we sat there and talked for another 30 minutes and it was really um, amicable exchange and just seems like a genuinely really a, a nice guy, you know. So I was really thankful that he had me on there. And yeah, I, I, I had a good time. I really did. You had a lot of good things to say about me. So, of course, well, I enjoy that. Well, you know, like I said, we've we known each other too long. So really, you know. We know where the bodies are hidden. Exactly, exactly. Uh, to that point, I'll say not to jump ahead like on ReaperCon, but Eddie and I have become so, um, what's where I'm looking for? You We're like, you see one of us. You Psychosexual. See yeah, stop. You're sick. But anyway, <laughs> um, which you all should know that by now. But you seriously, just figured it out. there were a number of people at ReaperCon that were like, where's Eddie? And I'm like, I can go places without him. We're not attached to the hip, you know. But it did seem a little odd being at a gaming function and Eddie's not somewhere in the vicinity you know so it was a trip yeah who are you going to snark to when I'm not there exactly exactly but anyway who can I say this horrible horrible <laughs> remark to that will laugh instead of going oh my god yeah yeah being becoming aghast exactly you know between being a nurse and just in general being a, a, a dark personality at times my humor is a bit dark, but so is Eddie. So that's one of the things we have in common. That's what our, our, our friendship is really built on really dark, morbid humor. <laughs> I'm not quiet. I'm just not, I'm too, I'm too smart to say what the dark voices in my head are saying. Exactly. So. <laughs> like the guy said one time, if you knew what I'm thinking in my mind, you'd be punching me in the face right now over and over, you know, but anyway, uh, but yeah, uh, so we're looking forward to, um, to seeing those guys had a great time on Rolling Bones. That was awesome to be on there. All right. Speaking of where else you can catch us on the internet, we have a Twitch show coming up on the Goodman Games channel. Mm -hmm. You probably thought we were retired by now, but mm -hmm. we missed one because Matt, of course, tried to kill me with the COVID, which will never get old, mm -hmm. which he loves hearing about. This mm -hmm. is another one where you need a video podcast right. so you can see this face. Never going to let it go. To, you know. But our Twitch show will be back on 20 September. I hope that's right. I thought it was 19, but whatever. Whatever the Tuesday is. It's going to be the Tuesday around that date. Absolutely. 19th, 20th. It's in that general vicinity. I'm going to say it's going to be the 20th. You are it's correct. It's going to be me. Yep. It's going to be the 20th. Did you say seven. that last part again? You are correct. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, even a, even a broke clock is right twice a day. But um, Tuesday, September the 20th at 7 p.m. Central Time. Okay. Is, it, is that cent it is Central Time? Yeah. Right? yeah. 8 o'clock uh, everywhere else in the world. Probably. 7 o'clock Texas Time. Yeah, probably. The time. only time that matters. That's right. The hee-haw. Hee-haw. And this is the one that you will have to correct me on. Tinkar's Tavern. You remember uh, that one? It's in October. That's what I remember. Well, there's that. So I had offered up a second date to Mike, and he gets he needs to confer with Eric. Oh, we're not locked in yet? So, yeah, we're going to be, we'll let you all know the date ASAP. Uh, look for us on Facebook or listen for our next podcast. We'll give you the confirmed date, but we are to be on uh, Talking Crit here sometime in the future. They've invited both of us. So definitely there'll be some vodka involved, and it'll be People fun. really appreciate when they get the package deal. Exactly. Because exactly. they want the best banter in the biz. You're right, right. Yeah, you because know, to get one of us is, is a coup, but to get both, you just won the lottery. Yeah, that's when you know your ratings are going through the roof. Because I'm trying to think. Yeah, we've never both been on something before. So these guys are smart. Well, then they're Twitch, of course, and this. But I'm talking about who had us on that was both. Video podcast. So you guys could see the look that I'm giving Matt. I am. How did we start this podcast thing? Oh, well, yeah, we were on one way back in the Stone Age or whatever. We yeah. did their show twice. We did twice. I know. I, I do remember. Two smart guys and a friend, anyway, which I think yeah. they're on hiatus, but I actually had yeah. uh, Jess give us a like the other day. So, I mean, that's the first peep I've heard out of him in a long time. Well, he's living his best life because I think uh, every time I've glanced at his Facebook page, he's he's got some little squeeze he's running around having fun with. So good for him. Don't hate celebrate. Hey, no, I'm I'm hey, I'm happy for anybody that's found uh, someone special to spend their time with, and you know, and and Jesus, Doc, you know, right? Maranto, he's he's in his band, and then his his duet, and he's just constantly 
performing somewhere. So I'm, 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 where does he find time to be a doctor? Ha ha. Let's let that land, folks. Let's give that joke all the room it needs. Yeah, let, let it breathe a little bit. So I guess the other thing that I'll bring up before we jump into this uh -huh. full force is you've been threatening the listeners a lot lately. Really? Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. I've noticed it's very subtle in there, but there have been several times where you say, I'm going to freaking kill you. It's it, it's as if our editor is having way too fun with a little snippet that he deviously drew out of me or whatever. I thought you had some sort of Tourette's. That's uh, what I thought yeah, it was. Yeah. If, you, if you didn't know that was some really poor editing, <laughs> then God bless y'all. What other kind of editing do we have on here? True, true. You know. You're doing your best, man. And it's, it's awesome. It's but, awesome. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. So... Um, the Save for Half podcast, great bunch of people, um, Mike and Liz, they had offered to, uh, if we, we'd make a quick, like 30 second ad, they would run it in their podcast between now and long con. And so Eddie, he wrote a little script, handed it over to me and we quickly, you know, just knocked it out one take. And at the end of it, he had written, you know, be there, or I'm going to F and kill you. And I wasn't going to say the actual words. So I said, freaking. But even then, Freaking. he cut that off. I don't know why. But then now I know why. Because he's got the, the ultimate use for it. To just constantly pepper it into our podcast. Or I have so much stuff. If I, I wanted to. Yeah. If I wanted to. You've given me everything I'll ever need. Oh, I know. I know. Well, duh. duh. That's right. I got to. I said that to somebody this weekend. They were like. I, it's your catchphrase. That's my catchphrase now. So Yankees like, chain. Yeah. So. I was like, well, duh. Um, and now you've got another one. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll freaking, freaking kill you. So anyway, um, yeah. All right. So what's next? What is next? Next is where we get into the pop culture part. Oh my goodness. You got any books or comic books? Mm, I just bought a huge stack of books from that used bookstore in um, Gladewater, but I haven't read any. All right. Well, I have what everybody's w been waiting for. Transformers Shattered Glass 2. The first issue is out. I've already talked about it. It's kind of like a Star Trek Mirror Mirror, mm -hmm. where it's like, this is, what if they were all evil? Mm -hmm. Like Optimus Prime is the ultimate bad guy and Megatron is the ultimate good guy. Oh, wow. So it's been pretty good. It's been interesting to read. So if you checked out the first one, go ahead and check this out. If you didn't, okay. I understand if it's not everybody's cup of tea. Right. Uh, the other thing is they finally wrapped up the latest Hulk and Thor battle, mm -hmm. which ended with a resounding, hmm. hmm. It's like nobody can get a clean win, of course. Yeah. So it was good. It was okay. Uh, I'm ready for them to get back to their own separate things. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. TV. So... I've watched a little more community and it's, it's it, the occasional guffaw or chuckle. It's, it's fun to watch. And it's been nice to have that, you know, um, to enjoy. And, oh, and I wa what's funny was, um, watching the old star Trek, which I'm still also watching the original star Trek on Paramount. It got to the one about, uh, Khan Noonien Singh or whatever. And I, oh. and yeah. So then that got me to think about after watching that episode of old Star Trek, I said, you know what? I got to do it. I dusted off Star Trek two, you know, the movie with as Eddie's, you know, gone. And I really enjoyed, that's why that one did so well at the box office and was a return to form. The first Star Trek movie, whoo, it, they laid an egg on that one, you know, but yeah, the second one's when it really got good and, and it was a lot of fun. It was interesting though, to go back and watch that and realize that was made like what, like 80, 81, I mean, early mm -hmm. 80s. And so I can remember me and my buddy Micah and his dad going, he took, his dad took us to see that. And then we went to DQ afterwards, like the things you remember. But I remember all three of us, us kids and him, a grown man that were just like, oh man, that was so good. And just, you know, really. Star enjoyed. Trek one or two? Star Trek two. Oh, okay. I was about to say. About no, no. One, like I said, they laid an egg. Phew. But two, no, we were all. And it's funny was, I'm sure I'd seen that episode because through the years, how many times have I been somewhere where like, oh, look, Star Trek's on. And it's the, the original. Used to, it was ubiquitous. I mean, it was everywhere, you know, on all kinds of channels. And go visit family in New Mexico and it's like, Star Trek's on TV. 
That or I remember even seeing Space in 1999, and I haven't seen that in a lot of years. But anyway, yeah, but but um, I didn't quite remember that episode well enough to really enjoy this callback to it in the movie. But I mean, by, on its own merit, that movie is is really a fun, cool movie. Yeah. All right. Um, do you have any other TV? Now, pretty much like I said, I've been so really genuinely super busy lately. Sadly, I have not more to share with you good people. All right. I watched Under the Banner of Heaven. I finally got to finish that up. I watched the first episode, I think, right after the COVID. Mm -hmm. And then I had to wait. That's been like a couple of months now, right? Wow. I had to wait for Shark Month to end with my wife mm -hmm. so that she could watch that so she could watch the first episode and go yeah i want to watch that with you or not mm -hmm. so she finally watched it and then uh, in a couple of days we'd finished it's only seven seven episodes mm -hmm. so it's really good it's about some murders in provo utah hmm. and it, this was uh based on a true story yeah so these were some Mormon murders. Oh, what, Mormon murders. Yeah, it was really very interesting. It's a good, yeah. interesting story. Recommended to me by Ron. Mm -hmm. It's so good. Mm -hmm. It makes me forgive him for murder, dirt, or... You murder so that's dirt. really good. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So definitely check that out. I don't know if you even heard about this, but I woke up this morning and flipped on the Hulu, and they're like, here's a new episode of Rick and Morty. Really? So I don't know if there's been some kind of buzz around the internet that I missed mm -hmm. or if they just did this as a surprise thing. Well, you remember they slipped that one out for April fools that time and kind of blew everybody's minds, you know? So I haven't done the research to go, Oh, it's started or this is going to be the lead in a month. They're really going to start the show. Mm -hmm. I would highly recommend you go back and watch the last episode of season five before you start it. Cause, Cause it's a lot of like callbacks and tie ins. And I was like, I don't remember half this stuff. Mm -hmm. So again, kind of like I said about Archer, it wasn't like, Oh, it, it was hilarious because it's doing so much plot and tying stuff up and wrapping things together. So, mm -hmm. so really what we'll to wait for the next episode to see what, yeah, what, what caliber. And that's the thing about Rick and Morty is it's so all over the place because there were some last season that were awesome and some that were okay and some that were man, some that were just, ugh. Yep. so it's really, I mean, you have to wonder like, is it a different group of writers every time or something? Because, you know, which, uh, reminds me, I also watched, is it little devil, little demon? Yeah. Didn't, that uh, Danny DeVito one oh, where he's Danny the devil. DeVito. Oh, and then, but in, um, she played April on parks and rec. Yeah, I think she, she maybe did, she's the mom. Yeah, or something. She's doing a voice on there, I know. And I really like her. She's she's. Yeah. So I watched one episode of that and was like, I'm out of here. It was pretty bad. Yeah, I, I like. I trust my gut a lot of times these days as you get older and hopefully wiser. And just looking at the promos I'd seen, I was like, this is not going to be my cup of tea. But Dan Harmon's working on that one too. Oh, yeah, because supposedly now it's like, oh, get Harmon. You know, it's gold. Not, it's Well, that's like old. Um, Justin Roiland. No, or or the American Dad slash uh, oh Seth MacFarlane. Seth MacFarlane. It's like father. Let Seth MacFarlane do it. It'll you know, no. It's like your mileage may vary, but no, mm -mm, no. So I, mean, I saw that one. I didn't like that. But you've got Dan Harmon doing that outside of Rick and Morty, and you've got uh, Roland doing uh, Solar, Solar Opposites. Opposites, and they're both doing other stuff. So you have to wonder how much that impacts rick and morty how much time they can put on that anymore so mm -hmm. i don't know we shall see reserve judgment yeah like talking about community was it's fun to remember that was dan Harmon's i think first breakthrough thing where he was you know which i like community i yeah. watched it all absolutely and uh archer i think mm -hmm. i can't remember if they've got out two or three episodes now probably two the first one again was a lot of ha heavy lifting and plot points so i was like eh. and then i watched the second one and it was not very funny so oh, wow. i'm not gonna write off the season yet but, but it's it's not like go run out and see it it's hilarious okay so we'll see how that goes yeah. all right how about some movies like i guess i've watched uh star trek 2 you know the wrath of khan and i think that's about it like i said been crazy busy so how about you 
No, not that I can think of. Uh, We're a little good. bit short on the week. Yeah, and then for two is you and the missus have really been spending a lot of your time trying to you just it sounds like devouring this Mormon Utah murder fest. Uh, Banner of Heaven. Was that what Under the called? Banner of Heaven, yep. Yeah, yeah, Banner of Heaven. So yeah, y'all been busy with that. And uh thir- last Thursday night when I do the board game nights when I'm not when it's not D and D Thursday, mm-hmm. it's board game Thursday. She came up with me and did that last time. Since she, for her long weekend, she got the Friday instead of the Monday. Uh-huh. Where so I got the Monday. She went up to Dragon's Nest and hung out with us and played games, and she had a fantastic time. Oh, good. So good. That's great. made some new friends. Oh, good. Awesome. Awesome. So a good time. And, and what games did you, did you run? That is none of your business. Well, that's everyone's business. So Paint the Roses, mm-hmm. which is kind of like a logic puzzle, oh. and that's an Alice in Wonderland reference, Interesting. which I don't get but uh, people that like that like my wife are like oh yeah so it's in the what is it queen of hearts in her realm they would paint the flowers because she like wrote red because she's nuts nuts, she changes her mind Mm -hmm. but it's a very logic puzzle sort of thing process of elimination Mm -hmm. you're seeing like those grid charts where it's like well it can't be you know dude number one because the guy was wearing a hat and it says not wearing a hat blah 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 is this in anything in a vein of like clue where you know you had to figure out who did it with this no, one? No, it's one? it's more if you remember like those old logic puzzle books. Oh yeah, where it's like by process of elimination, I'm going to deduce what your card is. So you're oh, trying okay. to guess what cards people have in their hands, uh-huh. and it's co-op, but you're oh. not allowed. I'm not allowed to say like my card is a red heart. Okay. So it's co-op, but you can't reveal. So if you like logic puzzles, mm-hmm. that game might be for you. If you don't, it's not. Well, I mean, overall, what would you give out of five stars? I'll go with four, but I kind of like the logic puzzles, mm-hmm. and my wife loves it. So she bought the game. Wow. And she really enjoyed it. But I will give you fair warning. If you're not a logic puzzle kind of person. You probably wouldn't rate it for yourself. But if you like that sort of thing, four out of five. So thank you. And the other was Azul. Oh, yeah, I've heard awesome stuff. Like Azul, people rave about it. So that is a tile placing game. You're mm-hmm. drafting pieces and putting them into your little wall. It's very easy to learn. Mm-hmm. Very simple to set up and play. If the scoring is a little wonky, okay. that's always the, like, am I scoring this right? Yeah. That's always the question with people. Mm-hmm. So they should have worked on that a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But other than that, it's okay. But they've got like these sunburst candy, the starburst, my bad. Mm -hmm. The candies, it's about that size. So I don't know. What is that? Maybe one inch square? If, if, If even. So they're about that size and they're actual like tile or something. So they're hard pieces. Mm hmm. So I'm sure that adds to the cost of the game. Uh-huh. So I think that game is more on the like 40 to 50 side. Wow. Where you're like, ah, that's a pretty simple concept. And mm-hmm. it's more going to be the appetizer game than the game you play for the night. It's like, let's do a few rounds of this and then go on to whatever we're going to do. Kind of like when we used to play the one game I was given where it's like, do you have the ambassador or do you have the diplomat or do you have the the assassin or whatever that little card yeah. game once you had the concept you could whip through four five six games but after six seven games of you're like all right i'm good you know yeah and this one yeah i don't think you'd want that many rounds of it either yeah so that one is i think in the top 40 of board games and like you oh, said yeah, it has I mean, a lot of buzz around it, it. Yeah, it, has, it, it it's highly acclaimed by a number of people that i've heard of it but if you want to check it out they've got it you can get demos of it. You can just look in the box. Or is there anybody running? I'm sure there's some like YouTube videos you could watch to oh, get a yeah. you know, quick rundown of it. It might do a good job explaining the uh, the scoring that they did and apparently in the instructions. I've actually watched it because, of course, when I do these games, I'll watch YouTube videos. Mm-hmm. There were people that were getting the scoring wrong in YouTube videos. Or they'd be like, you watch this video and they say this. And you watch that video and they say that. Yeah. And then the, the uh, publisher of the game doesn't release an official video. How wonderful. Yeah, so you gotta love that you're getting possible disinformation, but it sounds like it's sort of nebulous or ambiguous or whatever the, the scoring. So who knows? I mean, pick something if you can all agree on it and just go with that. That's going what we forward. did. There I was like, go. we may be wrong, but as long as we're consistent, right? But I think 
it wasn't that bad once we actually learned it. Mm -hmm. But people learning it were still kind of like, is this right? Count my points for me. Double check me. So it's got that oddball feel. It's not satisfying. How about that? Yeah, right, right. It's not crystal clear like, oh, I obviously won and obviously got this many points. Mm -hmm. And because they invested so much in pieces and parts, mm -hmm. I don't know. I'd rather spend my money somewhere else. Okay. So that's interesting to get this feedback from you. It'd be like, um, what if they had a monopoly set, but then the little pieces were made out of pure crystal mm -hmm. or something like that, where it's right. like, it's water for glass. Yeah. So we'll have to charge you an extra hundred dollars for it. And you're like, mm -hmm. um, no. if you had gone with some cardboard or, but that's, you know, is my gimmick that it's a really ooh la la pieces. Or is it that it's a really great game or because mm -hmm. if you made it a little cheaper, maybe people will be like, bah. Yeah, maybe who knows, but you know, you kind of find that sweet spot price point compared to value of the game, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So as a game, I'll give it about a three. Mm -hmm. I'm glad I didn't have to buy it. <laughs> right. Is this one of those ones that was shipped to you to demo for the company or whatever? Uh, actually dragon's nest said here, take this home and learn it. Wow. You can come back and show us. Nice. So I did. And for somebody, it's going to be the right game. Mm -hmm. And I, if I had to uh, take, take a, take a bet or make a bet or whatever. And I showed you paint the roses and Azul, I would say probably seven, eight out of 10 people would take Azul mm -hmm. as the more fun, easier, maybe more entertaining uh, game or more uh, easier to learn. Accessible. accessible. Mm hmm. So between the two of those, so we're kind of the oddball on that where we like paint the roses better, mm -hmm. but Azul, you really have to think about the value. Mm -hmm. That's where it, that's what kind of weighs it down. Mm -hmm. It's fun, but, but is it fun at that price? Yeah. And is it fun enough? Like I got the thing mm -hmm. for $60. Wow. And that's a lot of cool bits and pieces in that game. And that's one that I'm like, I'd play that a lot. Absolutely. I can wait to play it again. See, yeah. whereas Azul, I'm like, if I never played it again, I don't hate it, yeah. but if I never played it again, it's no skin off my well, ass. And you look at, I don't know anymore, but years ago I bought the basic Catan game. It's got all the wood blocks and it's got all the cards and, and the cool board. And it's like 40 bucks. So it's like, that's a very reasonable price yep. for a game that's got that quality and replayability. And it's just a fun game that I've taught drunk people and half asleep people how to play it and they did well with it. So, I mean, but there's the deeper strategies and all that, you know, love, love. Yeah. Game. Where it's, uh, it starts off more simple, but as you get more and more into it and you're like, Oh, this is the best place to be putting, to try and get the most resources. Yeah, deeper and strategies. this is what I need to be trying to build and, mm -hmm. and learning how to sort of, you know, well, I tell you what, I'll give you three of these. If you give me one of those and all that, the being able to haggle and whatnot. So no, it's a fun game. How um, about some video games? Video games? I sadly have not played any video games. I have installed and played about five minutes of Infernax, which is Castlevania-esque, uh -huh. but it's kind of like got that really, I want to say 8-bit graphics, but what do you, is it even 8-bit graphics on the computer when you try and like mimic that older style where mm -hmm. it's like, was this an Intellivision game or something? Wow. So what I need to do is get my controller hooked up again. Mm -hmm. And then, yay, it'll be fun. But doing it on the keyboard, because I'm, I'm all about the console controls. Mm -hmm. If you put me on the keyboard controls, I stink. Hmm. So, because I know for our double R, mm -hmm. he would be the opposite. Even though he's the guy that he's learning me. it, yeah, yeah. I'll say back in the day when he was like, "You've got to play Skyrim," and it was for the you know, on the it was only on the computer, and I was kind of grousing about some things. And he said, "Try it with a controller; it's great with a controller." So even he's the one that convinced me to play Skyrim originally with a controller, and I did it for a while. I went, "No, I thought the keyboard was bad, but this is worse." <laughs> yeah, you know. But remember when we were doing Fallout seventy six mm -hmm. at the boot camp, uh -huh. and it's like, oh, yeah. Good whereas Lord. if you put that. If you made him do that on a keyboard and mouse, he'd uh -huh. probably breeze right through it. And mm -hmm. I'd be the one that's like, I'll never be able to accomplish yeah, this. No, I will say that is, I can't imagine people that like, I play video games, but I have certain 
problems or something. God bless them trying to do that boot camp. But what's funny was if you go get like say the um, the kangaroo uh, uh, mutation, mutation, it makes that a, a cakewalk. It's a joke after that. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, that was the video games. Um, next would be RPG updates. If you have anything to say, do you have anything for your Savage Pathfinder? Um, <clears throat> yeah, we've having fun with that, and we're we're hoping to grow that here locally because kind of like when we had grown um, Adventures League originally, uh, we had you know three and four tables of that going at times, and then we we had like uh, interactives at LongCon. Well. Gary and I are hoping like if we can get two and, and maybe eventually like a third table going of that, we fully intend to do interactives at long con with it, which would you know, like, like to tie things up storylines and, and interactives are a lot of fun. Cause it's basically I say like normally at the game club, the three tables are playing the same adventure, but each one could have different outcomes and, Oh, how do I put this? And, and basically at the end of the night, it's still the fun in the parking lot of like, hey, did you let the prince go? No, nah, we assassinated him. No, he escaped and got away on our table. What? You know, or did you find that one secret room with all the gold? No, man, crap. How much gold do we miss out on? But you love comparing notes and hearing how one table did on something and you did and how you resolve things. But in the interactive, all three tables are playing the very same adventure. And it might be the thing where like, we've got to siege this fort full of demons. You guys go try to get that gate open. You take out those catapults. You go, you know, whatever, um, take down the flying beasts that are dropping rocks on our head, you know? And so the different teams are fighting in the same overall battle, trying to accomplish these different goals that are going to help. And like at the end of it, well, how many catapults did they take out? Well, that's going to have some bearing later in the adventure. Did they, did they, how many flyers did they take out? You know, did they get the gate down in time or whatever? And so you're accomplishing certain objectives that will have bearing later in the adventure over how easy or hard it is. And, and that's fun. And then like the final battle, you'll go against the big bads. And so these interactives are just a ton of fun. And that's something I'm hoping that, We'll have, and we're picking up more people at our tables. So our tables, which we get about one or two more players. We're going to be on two tables. So I'm excited about that. And, uh, the one that we did the last RPG night was a, um, one shot, one page oh. adventure. Mm -hmm. So I was say we're done a little early. It yeah. Like. But that was pretty fun. And Garrett ran a fantastic game. Thank you, Garrett. Uh, Garrett runs a great game. I think Talented. we ended up doing that because Doug and Nicole, Nicole being probably one of our favorite listeners Absolutely. were not able to make it. Oh man. So, but we did get that in. That was pretty fun. I'm looking forward to seeing them coming up this Thursday, mm -hmm. but at the very end of it, uh, of this adventure, there's a little creature that's like, I'm not the bad guy of the story. The old lady upstairs praying is the bad guy. Mm -hmm. So then it was like, okay, detect good and evil. <laughs> It's like this adventure is over. <laughs> the secret has been revealed. Yeah, that's sucker. The, that's the sad thing about it. if it's a game that has you know to take evil, that really can you know, or like that's why like when we were playing the game that time with Hirschberger, first time we ever gamed with him, and oh, there, there's a circle of ESP. Oh, we're fixing blow this wide. I mean, we we just went off the rails because mm -hmm. there was a you know another guy had it. And he was like, no, 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 no. These people are all evil in this end. What's that about? Yeah, he you tried know? it out for a goof. Just like, eh, what's going on? And it's like evil, evil, evil. And it's like, all right, I guess the adventure is right here in the end. We never yeah. went to the dungeon. Yeah, because we were like, we got to get to the bottom of why are all these people run this tavern evil? You know, the barmaid's evil. The the groundskeeper's evil. The 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 stable boy's evil. Anyway, that was a lot of fun. Hirschberger was kept it in stride, and he freestyled and improv and because they didn't really flesh out the tavern because the adventure wasn't supposed to be mm -hmm. there. And we literally got one foot in the, t in the dungeon. And he goes, "Well, that's time, guys." We were like, "Wow!" But, but we had fun. We still talk about it today. Yep. And he ran a great game. And uh, oh, just a general podcast note here: as we move through the episodes, there's a very good chance that episode seventy-five wow. could be. The return of Brendan oh, yeah. to the cool. podcast. So that cool. kind of, he was on episode 25. Wow. So that could be something for 75 and maybe we get Beatty roped in. Wow. So how, would you guys like to hear either one of them or, or both? Let us know. Give us some feedback. Because, you know, yeah. And we will have a special guest for the Twitch. Oh, my. Oh so my. look forward to that. Yeah. Uh, okay. With that, with us being 40 minutes in. Yeah. 
let's get to the topic, which mm -hmm. is ReaperCon. And I see your lovely badge and lanyard over there. That's really nice. Yeah, yeah. So really a nice lanyard. And the hat, it only cost five um, Reaper bucks or whatever to get the hat. And it's a decent hat. I'd hope to get one for Eddie, but they were gone pretty darn quick. Um, I have the only hat I'll ever need. That's right. He's wearing his gorgeous and in much better shape than mine. So it's got shows a little wear. He wears it, but his long con hat's in great shape. Beautiful hat. And I, I, not to brag, but when I had those hats made, I made sure it was of the highest, highest quality. Yeah, I actually they're had really somebody hard. ask for one because of the high quality of the hat. They're, they were like, those I mean, are nice. No, really, no. Because I mean, somebody else was giving away the like promotional caps where... I don't know what you want to call it, but where it's all the the holes, like, uh -huh. is that a baseball cap? Well, I think is they, this a baseball think, cap? Yeah, and I think traditionally, if it's got the solid front, but the back there is that plastic mesh, I think they call those trucker caps. Okay, so yeah. they were giving away very, very cheap trucker caps. Yeah, yeah. And so somebody was like, but your long con hat, now that's ooh la la. And that is, it, it's quality, baby. Mm. Well, that's like not to poop on the Reaper hat, but it's like the bill's good construction, but the actual hat upper cap part, like ours has got ample room. You can really pull it down on your head like you'd want to. That one, if you got a big melon like me, you, you can't, you have to pull it real snug down on your head to get that bill right above your brow. You know what I mean? So, you know, they, it's, it's not nearly as, uh, you know, nice as ours, you know, but I mean, you know, it's not everybody, you know, goes to the kind of links we do to make sure that if you're going to wear our shirts and hats, you're going to wear them quality. for a long time. Quality. That's the words you come to mind. But anyway. So ReaperCon. ReaperCon. So I uh, got ReaperCon late Friday night because I had to work that day. And so, you know, by the time I got there, things were kind of winding down. I did see some gaming, but, and they did put aside a pretty decent, uh, <laughs> decent size area for uh, for gaming but as of that area probably a, th a fifth of it was taken up by tabletop and you'd figure a this seemed odd to me it's for a con that's that's based a company that sells miniatures that's their number one thing they do is sell miniatures there would have been a lot of tabletop like warfare strategy gaming because they've got their cav line that's kind of like their version of uh battle tech or um you know, the, where it's the robot with pilots in them and, you know, in the future fighting or whatever. Maybe saw one or two tables of that. Um, but there were some tables with some beautiful terrain on them, but I never really saw many people playing on them, number one. As far as the role playing, otherwise, they maybe t took up one third, I'll say, of the of the gaming table set, table at such side. As far as the huge room full of all these painting stations, yes. And I'll give that to ReaperCon. I mean, it's it's ReaperCon. It's it's your know, miniatures. They had ample, you know, paint and take around the clock, like 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. There were different slots of paint and take, and people were having a lot of fun. And one thing I saw was, you know, we've never really ever really encouraged cosplay, but there was quite a bit of cosplay, and you and you could tell, podcast. yeah, it was like. Um, you know, this guy looks like a potato, but his girlfriend's kind of cute. And here's her chance to wear her fairy outfit or whatever, and, or her pirate outfit or something. So it's neat. But there were a few courageous guys that, you know, wore their costumes. There's one guy that he really had, like, he went the, the extra. It was a really cool cosplay costume. And people were like, dude, you know, you if look cool. If it's not let me solo her cosplay, I don't I don't care about it for yeah, guys. Yeah, there you go. Because I think it was Dragon Con or something that just went by that people were dressed up as that character uh -huh. which is basically a man in a loincloth with a pot on his head uh -huh. so you got to have the body to yeah, pull you've that got one the off. physique and, and that's the other thing was it's like uh, cosplay maybe isn't for everyone you know i know that's probably not pc to say that but yeah um but i'm saying it anyway but no there was some very good cosplay and it was fun and flattering and all that so there's a cosplay. They had a vending area. Again, not very large. Um, our good friends, the the frogs, you know, Frog God Games, Zach, we mentioned earlier, Mike were there. And uh, and uh, uh, Zach's... Miss Jennifer. Miss Jennifer, Zach's lovely wife, you know. And they were just super nice and super great. And they had a really neat setup of stuff the frogs were selling. And our good friend, Ben Burns, who's going to be at Long Con, who was gracious enough to invite me out and, and give me a badge. Um, he was running his you know new comic games booth and... He was selling a lot of uh, really neat dice and his awesome game product that he's made, like his uh, star on the shore. Isn't that 
yeah, which is a really, really, really great Cthulhu adventure. If you like Cthulhu, anything Ben's done is, you know, chef's kiss, just the best stuff, high quality. He's won numerous Three Castle Awards now because his stuff is really very good, very professional. So it was neat to see them there. And there were a few other booths that had that kind of, that caliber, you know, whatever. But anyway, it was a very small vending area. But again, the focus here is, you know, Reaper and their miniatures. It's a, I mean, yeah, it's for a sure. Con. Yeah. And to hear from someone that here that told me, I don't know if I should read their name, but like they said, when they said, oh, I've been here three, four years in a row and I see more gaming all the time. I'm like, if this is adding games more every year, and this is, I mean, it, there was not a lot of RPG gaming. And again, uh, probably a healthy portion of it was the world's oldest, you know, role-playing games, most recent incarnation. D&D. Yeah. And my thought was to go fifth edition of it there that I'm like, you know, I could fall backwards over a log and fall into a fifth edition game. It's, 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 it's ubiquitous. I still don't quite, I'm scratching my head when it comes to why would I drive off to some con to play a game I can play anywhere, but to each their own. But I'm like, I'm proud of some people I saw there that I know that were like, I go to cons to try something new or different, something I couldn't find at home. Or, you know, it's kind of like, you, well, can, you can still learn those new tricks. And that's true. You can get some, I like to just get under new GMs and pick up their styles and take notes on that. So. And there's that. Absolutely. And that's, and that's true. I, I, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll nod to that. Absolutely. But, um, it's like, yeah, you know, like me, I drive to Dallas and I'm there and I'm like, oh, well, I'm here. I'm going to get some Ethiopian or some Indian food because I can't get that back home. I mean, it's literally, it's ironic when I think about it, what a great analogy, you know, because either you can't get in here, it's not very good. It's like, oh, well, I've driven this far. Let me go buy India 101 or go to the Queen of Sheba and get mm, delicious exotic food or whatever. But anyway, but I'm sure you can find a really good burger in Dallas too. Um, but yeah, but there was quite a bit of fifth edition, but there was a little bit of diversity otherwise. And of course they've introduced their own new role playing game that they're still in beta. So anyway, which they were giving away free copies of the beta rules of their own role playing system. Cause if there's one thing we need desperately is another set of fantasy role playing rules desperately. It's like another podcast and another convention. Exactly. Or another Twitch. Uh, but anyway, but I had a good time. Um, I Friday night when I got there, I bumped into our old friend, Jason Lilly's and he was like, man, I know you were going to be here. And so him and his son, Gus, that we just adore were there the next day to game with me at my games. And, uh, I ran Savage Worlds Pathfinder for my first slot, had a full table, uh, Gus and Jason, I think were new to Savage Worlds and the two other players were kind of new to it, but the other the fifth and sixth were old hands at Savage Worlds, and uh, they helped me, you know, kind of while I'm running the game, they could sort of remind or show rules and give tips to the players. And I had my usual cheat sheets and stuff. But the Savage Worlds game was a lot of fun. Uh, Jason played a cleric, and you're not going to believe this. Gus played a barbarian. I don't believe that. I know, I know. And, uh, and but they were both in in rare form, and they were a lot of fun. And even the other players, I seemed like they grasped the basic concepts quickly, and we had a lot of fun with it. It was one of these old Pathfinder Chronicle adventures that Gary had quite easily converted over into Savage Worlds, and and we ran that and had a lot of fun. Uh, the second slot was uh, Barbarians of Ruined Earth, <gasps> and so. For that, I had a, a father and daughter team that showed up, and they seemed like they had a lot of fun. And Jason and Gus, and then we had uh, some friends of theirs, which are Stephen and Mike, and um, they were a lot of fun to game with. Stephen played a barbarian, and so I was going to tell you this little anecdote I sort of alluded to earlier. A lot of times when someone kills the bad guy, I'll say, so tell me how you, you finish him off to let you know you've killed him, but let me hear how you killed him. And some people just go, oh, I just, I, I killed him. You know, you're like, all right, you don't want to. But then this guy, every time he'd just lock eyes with me, real stern, he'd go, he's by the barbarian. He's like, I cut their head off. Like a little bit later, up, oh, and you know, his dice exploded. Right, you kill him in one hit. Tell me how you finish him off. And he just lock eyes, all stern, and just go, I cut their head off. Maybe so, he's the head lopper. Yeah. So I, I finally I said, This guy's the head lopper, you know. So about like the sixth time, I, and I thought, Why well, am I even going to ask him? I went, Tell me how you kill him. And he goes, I cut off their, and he hesitates, goes, Their leg. And so I locked eyes, and I said, Which leg? And he goes, The right leg. And so then I proceeded to like graphically describe how, you know, the femoral artery painted the room or whatever when he cut their leg off. And the little girl was a little squeamish. It was fun. Uh, 
But uh, but so that was kind of a little funny anecdote. Their friend Steven, he was a fun guy. Seemed like a good guy. And Mike, that came with them, he played. He reached in the stack and grabbed uh, a beast person. And oddly enough, I used this online. There's a thing called like the character roller upper or whatever. Ha ha. And so it rolled up a um, half bear, half armadillo. So a, mm. so a bear armadillo. So I just granted, Gratis said, you've got armor too, RP2, you know, just gratis. You don't have to even wear armor. And I'll let you wear up to like one more RP's worth of armor, you know. So that's Because I try to, like, people before have said, hey, I'm playing a, a tiger as opposed to a lion as opposed to a spider. What does it matter? Well, I try to always give them some cool little ability based off, you know, based off of what genotype or whatever they're playing. So like, like the one guy's like, I'm playing a beast man, but what am I? I said, you tell me. He said, I'm a lion. I said, all right, you can have a pounce attack or a roar. He's like, I want the roar. So, um, do the roar. Um, anyway, but his daughter played a sorceress and I was going to be disappointed if no one played a barbarian or sorceress because <sighs> great game. Love you, Mike. But he was not at all concerned with, with balance when he was making barbarians and who cares? You know, it's a fun game. Have fun. I don't care what you're playing. You're going to do stupid crap. If you put the right GM and the right players. And, uh, but anyway, the guy that kept cutting the heads off was the barbarian. I thought how apropos. And then the little sorceress girl, she's not, she's played other games. So she wasn't used to this. And so finally she's like, well, can I do this? And I said, hun, cause she's like, the spells are kind of vague. I went purposely. So, you tell me what you want to do. So she had taken like, like summon magic ally or whatever the magic ally spell. Don't think I've seen anybody take that. So she's like, well, what does it look like? And I said, you tell me. And so I love, I'm not aware of this thing, but there's these little plush animals that'll be like a, a triceratops, but it's kind of egg shaped and plush. So it looks like from my child, like a weeble wobble. But she said, I want to say it looks like a stiffy, diffily do little stuffy, roughy, whatever kind of little, this thing, chippy, wibby, whatever. I'm like, uh, okay. So she pulled up a picture on her phone and showed me, I went, oh, okay, you've got that, but it's at least got to have some little stubby legs. She's okay. But I still said, it's going to take this thing with them stubby legs, 20 minutes getting to combat. So she goes, I punted into combat and went, all right, you know, it flies in. Well, she, so using her ally and so she's involved every turn, she's rolling for this thing and rolling out of the box, like rolling ones. And things are trying to stomp it or kill it. And, you know, which is this barbarian. So that's a good thing. Yeah. And she's rolling, you know, uh, when things are trying to stomp it, she's rolling really, really well or whatever. And so one thing with my barbarians I like to do is someone rolls a nat one. I'll be like, all right, you can either do double damage or something really cool happens. You know, um, it'll be regular damage and something cool. And, uh, or like, uh oh, you rolled a 20. Well, you know, something you can either have double damage or da regular damage if something bad happens. And I love the dad at one point, he rolled a 20 on a, on a, him trying to evade something because the players, it's pl uh, player rules forward. I never touch a dice the whole game. I let them even roll their own damage when I hit, or you could use average damage. And so the guy looked at the table and Jason and Gus were like shaking their head for like, don't let Matt have creative control here. So he's like, I'll take double damage. And I was like, all right, smart man. And like, he took like two D 10. It was a pretty good hit, but he activated his thick hide beast man power. And I was like, Oh, you read your rules. Unlike I was teasing Gus happy of the game. He's like, Oh, I get two attacks. And I had to I tease Gus about that. But, um, anyway, the little girl at one point I was like, all right, you want to do double damage or like a regular damage and a crit. And she's like, I'll, I'll take the cool effect. Well, so like the thing, basically I said, we're going to say your little stuffed guy is filled with marshmallow cream. Marshmallow explodes all over the creature. And now it's going to gum it up where it's got disadvantage, you know, for the next few rounds. And she just loved that, that it was had marshmallow filling in her little cute stuffed animal. <laughs> Some combat ally she'd summoned. But anyway, we had a lot of fun. Here comes, I saved this for you. So Jason, what a guy he'll step up and play the party's healer. So instead of playing a, a death priest or a sorcerer with the healing spells, which is not a bad idea at all. He, instead he played the, the, uh, the medic robot. Well, your first heal with the medic robot is gratis, but after that you have to roll a die four. And if you roll a one or two, you've exhausted the healing gel or whatever from your inner reservoir as a healing robot. Jason rolled four, four, for, I mean, he healed numerous times and it really should have been shut down and I'm happy for the party, but it really kept him going, uh, in my adventure death, uh, um, schoolhouse rock, R O W R A W K. And, uh, 
But what's funny was his dynamic for when he had to heal. He's like, my medical robot can only heal through caresses and snuggles. So it's constantly him going like, I come in for the hug or I, I got to come in from behind. And, you know, and it was just Jason was leaning into it and making it as uncomfortable and hilarious as possible Good. over and over and over. So, I mean, bravo, Jason, you kept me in stitches with your, your robots healing caresses and snuggles, you know, the snuggle bot 2000. Um, and everyone played well. Everyone seemed to have a lot of fun. I had a great time and it was really nice that I want to say thank you to Ben and the frogs. Cause they let us put some flyers out on their tables and it's nice that we're always having to beat the drum and toot the horn and promote our game. It really, 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 really means a lot to us when there's other people promoting us. And it was nice to be walking up and Ben can't see me walking up and I'd hear him going, you know, it's a great con, you know? And he was like, you know, at one point he's, he'd got done running his game and I heard some he, he were like, what, what's the next con you're going to be at? And he's like, I'm going to be at, you know, long con, the second best con in all of Texas. And I was like, I'll take that, you know, because we know which one's the best, of course, you know, but I was tickled that we were the second best. It takes us a big state, a lot of cons, but, uh, but Ben promoted us, the frogs promoted us and Gus and, uh, Jason stepped up and said some nice, at one point someone was asking me about it and I just gestured to them and they, you know, really gushed and said some nice things. And that just means a lot. Um, it's like online when people like and share things that we do to promote us that means so much to us guys thank you then i know those of you that do i know who you are i'm i'm watching and i want you to know i appreciate you guys a lot and those of you that aren't that aren't you're on the naughty list double r you're on the naughty list and even uh I, gary called me last night and was asking me about you know running a game at the at long con and well you know the first step of running a game is, is buying a badge <laughs> buying a badge yeah and i like some guy at the uh, reaper con was like hey i'm coming it's gonna be my first year and i went great man and um he didn't identify himself or i'd give him a shout out here but he said oh i'm coming and, and I, he's like can i put in and hell's coming with me that's right and i was like hot dog but um he said uh how do i you know i want to run games i said well buy a ticket and you can put in as many games as you like you know but anyway um because that was the weird thing about ReaperCon again they're no offense not to throw stones but the, who their program for submitting games and that side of things but I'll say in their defense, they're not really an RPG con. Exactly. They are about the minis and the paint, which yeah. God love them. That's great. Yeah. It's a fantastic product. Yeah. Okay, continue. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, so in their defense, so I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to integrate them because yeah, but it's like whoever, I think someone made that program for them. And it's kind of like Doug. Doug was a brilliant guy and he's, he was a computer whiz and he had written his own booyah. I mean, I couldn't do that. Bravo to you. But Doug, like originally had written a program for people to get into games at into RPG. And he finally realized there's someone out here that has a program that's made that's robust. Let's just use it. And, and people know it and it's unified. <clears throat> Again, if I, any, I doubt anybody's listening, but if anybody from Reaper is listening, why not just for the RPG side of things, just use tabletop events. If it ain't broke, you know. Hanson does some product support stuff. Exactly. You're welcome. But yeah, anyway, um, but the program that I signed up to run games was like any person who hasn't even bought a ticket might not even be coming. If they were someone who's malicious and wanted to be a jerk, you could go put in to run a million games and make a million different fake names. Just anybody can put in to run a game there with no skin in the game or no way to make make sure this is a real person or something that kind of gave me pause when I was signing up. Like I, cause it, I, I didn't have to identify that I have already bought a ticket and I'm actually coming to put in to run a game. Yeah. That's you know. why I like our GMs to pay in advance mm -hmm. and then get refunded. We will absolutely reimburse then you. then it's like, yeah, but you've got a little bit more motivation. If you're like, eh, maybe I'll stay home and sleep this weekend. Uh -huh. All right. You're out some bucks yeah well and that and that's the thing is at least we know there's that little that little sting there because it, it is upsetting to think there's people that have like oh, i'm gonna run a game at every slot and then at the last minute like oh, i'm not coming you just disappointed let's see seven times six is how many people yeah it made us look bad thanks I would a say lot it's the opposite of a delight yeah <laughs> if you had like a leaky leaky delight but anyway um yeah, yeah. That's a real name, I'm sure. Um, but anyway. Edit that out. Heck no. Um, oh, shoot. I want to shout it from the mountaintops. But yeah. 
Shout it from the mountain. But but uh, yeah, the Barbarians game was a lot of fun. It was really neat to meet uh, Jason Augustus' friend Mike. Seems like a really nice guy. Had some nice things to say. Sadly, he won't be coming to Long Con because he hasn't got his priorities straight. I guess he's not that nice a guy. Maybe not. Yeah, maybe I'm giving him too much credit. I think so. And uh, and then my third game didn't make, but Sunday games have always been a thing at cons where I'm almost kind of astonished. <laughs> when they do when make, they do you know they me. even have them exactly and it's just one of those things that you know i mean there were some games going on but not many i think there were all of maybe three i mean generous i think if i said four rpg games going well i sunday. think zach might run that civ game oh wow on sunday which wow. that's a perfect time to do it yeah it's a game that takes forever mm -hmm. so that's a good thing. That's a cool thing to do no, for a Sunday. And, and Zach does a really great job with that. It's a lot of fun. And I would highly recommend that. If you wouldn't you intend a game on Sunday, try to get into Zach's Civ game. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to, we've got, you, know, you said Gary coming and now Bad Mike. And we got you know, both of the Battle Audios. Rob's coming. Rob is already going to come. His Gladiator and his uh, Chariot races are a lot of fun. If maybe you're just like, ah, I'm going to come and wander around the vendors and just kind of interact and it, like kind of old home week, that's a perfect thing. You can pop into a Gladiator game. It'll be over in 15, 30 minutes, depending on how hot someone's dice are. And it's a lot of fun. I won't lie. It's, I've avoided it for years. I wouldn't say avoided, but it's just, it just, I was busy doing traditional RPG gaming, you know, and I was like, eh, I don't know about this. And I finally, Rob came and twisted my arm and said, dude, you signed up a couple years in a row and then you blow me off. And I'm like, sorry, man. He's like, come, he's, you know, come on and fight. Now is the time. And I had a blast. I had a lot of fun. And, uh, and I'm, I fully intend to do it if I can, you know, cause we're busy running a con, but if I can, I'm, it, it's a quick thing I could probably do is step away and what? play a quick game of, of gladiator or something. So we'll see. I'm looking forward to it. And the chariot races, they do that after hours. So I know I can get into that. The, yeah, they bottle do, tech. They, well, it's pretty much bottle chariot race too. Don't kid yourself. But I mean, it's the, this, these are the stories. This is what gaming convention lore is made of. of these. This is what antics. you can't do at an online con. Exactly. And, that, and I'll tell you, our con is big enough that you've got a really good variety of games to play, but it's small enough, it's intimate that I'm telling you, you come to our con one time and you're, you're family, you're, you're a friend. And there's people that I've met through the con that, I mean, I look forward to seeing them and, you know, there's going to be pat on the back, handshake, hug, whatever. And, you know, we, we know who you are and, and we're glad to see you. And that's definitely something I've heard from other, like Ben's had something to that effect that like, when you come to long con, it's like coming like a homecoming. And this is Ben's words, not mine. And I just, it really, I got a little misty. And we have cake. Yeah, we have cake, good cake. So who does that? Who gives you cake? Exactly. You know, exactly. Cake is love. Cake is love. Yeah, I haven't seen Adrian in a while. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, look forward to seeing Adrian and Jonathan. You know, it's good to see them. That's that's the only time I get to see Adrian. It's a shame because those I mean, guys are busy. They really are. And Adrian's just the best sort of people. And people clamor for her games. Mm -hmm. She is quite the dungeon mistress. Oh, we should have Kelsey back. Yeah, which is uh, finally, you know, we've been looking for him to come back because everybody loves, you know, uh, Game they of They blow Robert. off our games for his games, if yeah, that tells and, you anything. Yeah, you know, not to, not to, you know. But yeah, I, I, I would be mad if it was anybody else. But I've had people blow my games off for him. I'm like, you know what? I don't, I don't, I don't blame you. Well, just so you know, I'm always mad. That's my secret cap. <laughs> Always angry. But anyway, yeah. So I took that person. So I would say that ReaperCon, it was it was not a bad experience. I always have fun running games. I got a good response from the players. But it's kind of like it, if they're going to endorse the that type of gaming, I wish they would lean into it a little more. You know, maybe or not, or maybe just focus on the miniatures. You know, that's well, think about us. That's the thing we're an RPG con that usually has some paint stations. Yeah. They're a painting con that has some RPG stations in a way. Yeah. And that's, that's a pretty good analogy. Um, I know we, one year we thought, well, we want to do board games, the spring con. And we really touted that and ballyhooed it. And the people, the people spoke, no one really, people showed up I'm like, we're here for the RPGs. And I'm like, your usual shtick. And we're like, Oh, you sure don't want to play? No, I don't want to play board games. we got a whole wall of them. Over. No, don't want to play. It's like, okay then, you know, well, like I said on the Facebook the other day, we are the con that you make us. Mm -hmm. We're not an old school con or a new school con. 
we are what you put into it. What you pour into this container is what you get. If it was something we didn't like, when then we'd be like, no. A guy showed up one time that was a second year at uh, Red River Con, and he brought a board game and a handful of his friends. And they're like, hey, man, is it cool if we like play a board game a slot? And I said, you can play Tiddlywinks in the slot. If you can get people to play with you, I don't care. And, yeah, he had people playing this a sort of fantasy board game. I can't remember which one it was, but people were playing it and having fun during that slot. Knock yourself out. It's four hours or less in the slot. If you know, like we've always said, like, can I run X at your con? If you think you can get people to play it, run whatever you want. You know, Mork and Bork or whatever. Mork, Mork. Yeah, Mork and Borkin. All right. Anything else? Um, gosh, I'm I'm sure there's something I'm forgetting, but on I a scale. Of one to two thousand four, mm-hmm. what would you give Reaper? Uh geez. I would you know, not <clears throat> on a scale of one to ten. I'd give it six and a half. You know. And I mean, because I'm a I'm an RPG gamer. That's mm-hmm. why I'm there. So I really don't care. It was neat to see the really beautifully painted miniatures in the competition area. I was just it's breathtaking and beautiful. And did I go to a paint station and paint and take? No. I've got miniatures here at home I really need to paint. I've got brushes and paints of my own that I really need to break out and use but I keep dragging my feet. So, I mean, no. I mean, if, if I was someone who was like, oh, boy, paint and take, this would have been a 10 of 10, I'm sure. I mean, for Just that. like you could have went to a Comic-Con mm-hmm. and been like, well, if you're a cosplayer, yeah. it would have been a 10 of 10. This but is if you're heaven. an RPG player RPG. So, and... So from from looking through the lens of an RPG gamer, I'll give it a six. That's being a little generous, but I'll give it a six. Um, I will say Reaper's got some interesting ideas, some things they do at their con, because it's like uh, somebody made the comment when they were asked, like, well, how did you like Gary Con? And I was speaking in not glowing terms, but really nice, and they said, yeah, at the end of the day, did they do one thing that you'd want to steal and bring back to Long Con? I went, no. And they were like, and there you go, you know. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I mean, whereas ReaperCon, like, ooh, they've got a couple of interesting ideas. Um, you know, yes, we'll steal with both hands if we like something. So I'll mm-hmm. give them that. They've got some innovative concepts. Uh, interacting with the staff, they were friendly, if not always the most knowledgeable, but they were friendly and helpful. And uh, so, yeah, and I mean, did I have a good time? That's the real thing, yes. I had a good time because I got to run some games, which I love running games, and the players seemed to really have a good time, which I feed off that energy, so... Yeah, I mean, I had a good time, but it, I wish they would, yeah, they might sort of, yeah, yeah. I had a good time. And to close out with our barbecue report. Oh, yeah. We didn't get any barbecue today, Larry. Yeah, we were going to get some barbecue and tell you guys all about it. We, Our mouths were set for some cue, and we were denied. But Larry has built it up so much, we're talking about doing a few uh, barbecue videos on the side, our little side hustle. Now, what do you think we should call our barbecue reports? Hmm. I was thinking, I don't know, maybe like the playlist or what have you would be out of character, uh, something along those lines, because uh, it's not RPG related. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. That's but we throw that out to you, and that's just a little thing that, a little bonus content you might find on the YouTube or something. Because I would hate to have to drive a little further afield to try some more exotic cue, you know, and have some reason to do it, tell y'all all about it. And then the last thing that I'll mention on the podcast, just because it makes me laugh, it's so hilarious. Uh, this part's not hilarious, but I guess one of my Facebook friends mm-hmm. must have been hacked because I just got a message from them mm-hmm. that does not sound like them at all. So I'm about ready to type back and go, because the message was like, how are you doing, buddy? And I'm like, oh, good. Just looking for a place to invest my million dollars. So that's going to be my reply back. And I'll get some entertainment out of this spammer for a few minutes at least. <laughs> that's hilarious. Hilarious. Well, I was going to say, so real quick, yeah, well, you sparked my thought. So Larry, hey, man, thanks for bringing up Barbarians and asking for some tips, because that gave me the idea to run it again at ReaperCon. And I got a really good response, and it was I forgot how fun it is to run. So thanks for bringing it up and putting it back on my mind. And I want to again thank uh, Jason and Gus and Ben and the Frogs, you know, for promoting us and and helping you know get the word out there. And we just really appreciate that. It means a lot. Uh, thanks to all of y'all. Video podcast. All right. The the uh, joy with the spammer has begun. Uh oh. 
So maybe you guys will get an update on that. Maybe I'll be completely hacked by the time you hear the next one. We can only hope. You'll have to get it on vinyl because I can't use anything digital anymore. Okay. Well, I can see by the look on Matt's face <laughs> and the clock on the wall that he's all out of hit points. <sighs> bye bye. I'm going to freaking kill you.